Okay, so now that we have um, proven the Bolzano wire stress theorem, we are in a position uh, to uh, prove the um, that uh, the real line is complete. Okay, so the real line under the usual Euclidean metric, of course. So uh, th that's the topic for this video. Uh, the real line, oh dear, what's happening here? The real line under the usual metric is complete. So it's a complete metric space. Okay, so uh, to prove that, we need to show that any Cauchy sequence is a convergent sequence in RD. So let's say we have a sequence X, which is a Cauchy sequence. So it's some sequence X1, X2, X3, X4, etc. of uh, real numbers, and it is a Cauchy sequence. So here is the real line, and we have some sequence like this, X1, X2, and basically... Um, it being Cauchy means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the absolute value difference between xn and xm is less than epsilon. So remember what that intuitively means. It means that uh, if you give me any epsilon, I can find your point in this sequence. So here's the sequence drawn out again, x1, x2, x3. I can go on and basically I will find some point x big N such that if you look at just that bit of the tail end of the sequence, so all the terms from x big N onwards, so x big N plus 1, x big N plus 2, etc., and you pick any two terms, uh, so let's say uh, we've got some x little n, and, oh dear, let me just pull this out so you can continue to see it, and some x little m, so they're, they're not necessarily next to each other, so I'll put some dots in between them, and again I'll put some dots here, uh, but basically you have two uh, terms of the sequence that are uh, beyond x big n here, so little n and little m are greater than or equal to big n, and basically you pick any two elements from this tail end of the sequence and ask what is the absolute value uh, of their difference, then that's going to be less than epsilon. Okay, so um, how are we going to prove that this sequence basically has a limit in the real line? That's what we want to do. We want to prove that we've taken an arbitrary Cauchy sequence and that it's going to have a limit, basically. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to show that it's a bounded sequence. Firstly, if it's Cauchy, it's going to be bounded. And then if it's bounded, it's going to obey the bolzano weierstrass theorem. So it's going to have a convergent subsequence. And we're going to show that if you've got a convergent subsequence of this sequence X and you've got that the whole sequence X is Cauchy, then those two things together imply uh, that this is a uh, that this is a um, that this has a that this is a convergent sequence, i.e., it has a limit. And indeed, it's going to converge to exactly what the convergent subsequence converges to. Uh, I, it's going to converge to the limb sub of this sequence. Uh, okay, uh, so um, so right. Uh, right, so uh, we firstly need to prove that this is bounded so that we can use the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem in the first place. Okay, right, so uh, what we are given here is that, uh, so remember what it means for a, a sequence of real numbers to be bounded. It means that you have some big M which is greater than or equal to all the terms. So this is an upper bound, so some big M upper bound for all the terms of the sequence. And you have some lower bound down here, little m, so this is a lower bound. And all the terms of the sequence sit somewhere in between these two, x1, x2, x3, etc. Okay, right. So how are we going to prove that they are bounded? Well, uh, because of this condition that it's Cauchy, uh, if I take this point x big N in the real line, x big N, and I construct the epsilon ball around it, so if I construct the epsilon ball like this, so the interval n minus epsilon to n plus epsilon, then basically all of the terms of this sequence have to be within that interval around, uh, sorry, all of the following terms of this sequence have to be within that interval because uh, you can take any two points in this tail end and their more absolute value will be less than epsilon. So pick your first point as x big n and then take an arbitrary point in here. It's absolute value difference between, so absolute value of x big n minus, let's say, x little m, where m is just any old number greater than or equal to big n, that has to be less than epsilon. So all of these other points uh, that you can pick where any for any m, this has to be true. So for all of these x little m's, they are all in here. So the whole tail end of this sequence is within uh, this um, 
within this interval, basically. Then, all you've got in front of that is a finite number of terms. So, if I get my highlighters, um, this set of terms here, all the way up to um, the last one will be x big M minus 1. Uh, all of these terms, they're just a finite number of terms. So, you've got a finite number of terms that are outside of here. So, let's just draw them on. So, here could be x1, here could be x2, and you'd have to draw them on all the way up to x big M minus 1. So, basically, what you do is, um, and of course, some of them, some of them might even be within this um, within this epsilon ball around big N. You don't know, but in more full generalization, there will be some outside of this open ball. So basically, just extend your open ball around this point n so that it incorporates all of these finite points. So for instance, if I want to include uh, x1, I'll make the ball bigger and I'll take it up to uh, the distance between, so I'll extend the interval so that it includes x1 and you can do that for this finite number of terms so you can do it for every single one, make the ball gradually bigger so it includes all of them and eventually you'll have a ball basically that includes absolutely all of them uh, and this is some finite, um, so let's say n minus, what should I call it, radius, n plus r, so this is n plus r up here, n minus r, so there exists some radius r which includes all of those points, and that just occurs because there's only finitely many in front of there, so you can do this. Okay, so just take some big M, which is greater than M plus R, and some little M, which is lower than M minus R, and we're done. Um, there's the proof that all Cauchy sequences have to be bounded. So, um, all Cauchy sequences are bounded. And that actually works in all metric spaces because uh, it didn't matter that the distance function was this um, modulus. If I just replace this with distance uh, and uh, these uh, intervals with open balls, then the exact same argument would have whole held true. Uh, that I could have constructed an open ball around the point n of size epsilon, which includes the entire tail end of the sequence. Then I just make the radius of the open ball gradually bigger so that it includes all of these finite number of points in front of it. So all Cauchy sequences are bounded. Okay? Right. So, uh, now we know that, uh, we know that uh, we can apply the Bolzano wire stress theorem. So, the Bolzano wire stress theorem, um, and I'm trying to reposition myself so that I block the sun, which is um, causing a, it causes a bad sort, it makes it more difficult to see the paper. Right. Okay. So, uh, by the Bolzano wire stress theorem, by the Bolzano wire stress theorem theorem okay that was a big one uh, right by the Bolzano wire stress theorem uh, there exists there exists a convergent subsequence okay right so construct that convergent subsequence of the sequence X so here is our sequence X uh, it was x1, x2, x3, etc. onwards, like that. Um, basically, because the sequence is bounded, there exists some... Uh, uh, by the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem, there exists a convergent subsequence. So let's write out this convergent subsequence. So I have xi1. So the way that you usually... The notation usually for a subsequence of a sequence is you write xi1, then xi2. So these subscripts, I1, you subscript the subscript to denote a, uh, a subsequence like this. So I1 uh, is some index, basically. So it could be, let's say, should we say it's 3? So I1 is equal to 3. Let's say uh, I2 is equal to 7. So XI2 is 7. And you go on, etc. So you've got then XI3, XI4, XI5. And all of these I, I whatever subscript, is a specific value basically. So then we go on xi6 etc. So we have this convergent subsequence basically and this is going to converge to some limit L. So we'll say okay uh, the limit of this subsequence, the limit as n approaches infinity of xi little n is equal to L. Right, so now what I want to say is because 
this original sequence x is Cauchy, and because we have a convergent subsequence that converges to L, it's going to imply basically that the whole sequence has to converge to L. And the reason intuitively is, we're going to make this rigorous, don't worry, uh, but the reason intuitively is that this is getting arbitrarily close, this subsequence has to get arbitrarily close to the point L, but also the terms of the sequence have to get arbitrarily close together. So, as this subsequence goes on, or it's also true that the rest of the terms of the sequence up here are getting arbitrarily close to the terms of the subsequence. So basically it ends up that all of the terms of the sequence end up getting arbitrarily close to L as well. Uh, because the two, the two criterions here sort of coincide to mean that this all gets closer to L basically. Okay, and the way that we can uh, rigorously argue that, so or, or just putting that into mathematical language really, Okay, uh, so is that if this uh, if this subsequence has a limit of L, that means that for all epsilon you take greater than zero, there exists some point that say big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, such that sorry I should have put if there, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that x i little n is an element, let's say, of the interval L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. So that's hopefully your use now to the um, definition of uh, limits, but that means that uh, there is um, there is some point, big N, xi big N, let's say, in the sequence, xi big N, uh, such that that term, so if this is the whole sequence, xi1, xi2, etc., uh, then uh, there's a point in that sequence for which that point and all terms after it are within this interval L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, is um, we're going to use this to prove that this converges. So, um, right, so the, uh, that the whole sequence converges to that limit L. So we want to prove that if you give me a uh, right, and this is where notation gets really awkward. So instead of using epsilon, I'm going to use delta for this one. Right, so... Um, we want to prove, we want to prove that the sequence x, which is equal to x1, x2, etc. onwards, we want to prove that this converges to L, basically. So that means that we want to prove uh, that if this is L, that you take any interval, and I'm now going to call this the interval L minus delta to L plus delta, so I'm calling the tiny little number, the arbitrary number, delta instead of epsilon in this case, because we've already used epsilon just previously, and if I don't, it's going to get horrendously confusing. Uh, right, so I need to prove that there is a point in this sequence after which all of the terms are within this ball of size delta. What I know is that if we look at the subsequence xi1, xi2, xi3, etc., I can get those arbitrarily close to uh, L. So if I take an interval of L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon, I can get them within there. So let's make epsilon. Let ep that. Well, firstly, what we need to do is um, we want to prove this. So let's let that delta be greater than zero. So we're saying take an arbitrary delta. I need to find your point. Uh, let's say uh, we've used big N in the previous one, so we'll use big N now, M now rather. I need to find your point big M, uh, X, sorry, this is going to be X big M, so I'll put X big M here, such that for all the, that term and all terms after it, it's going to be within this delta ball. So here we are, all those terms are going to be within it, basically. Okay, so we've got this arbitrary delta. Now, let epsilon be equal to, I think we will need delta over 2. So basically what I'm saying is, okay, here is L. Now create a ball of radius delta over 2 over there. And basically now use the definition of convergence of this subsequence to say that, okay, because this converges, uh, over the page we said that uh, you give me any epsilon, I can find you a point in this sequence, an x big N, sorry, an x i big N, for which that term and all terms after it were within this epsilon ball. So I'm now just saying, okay, take the ball of radius half, this original radius that we started off with, which, which we're trying to prove uh, that all the terms beyond there are within this um, delta ball, basically. And I'm saying take ha the, half that radius, and basically I can find your point in this subsequence after which all the terms are within that uh, ball of uh, that interval of radius uh, delta over 2. 
Okay, right. Now we use the Cauchy criterion that we have uh, for the sequence x. Uh, the Cauchy criterion on the sequence x here, x1, x2, x3, etc., means that um, for... Right, and I'm going to have to create another little tiny thing now. So I'm going to say for all eta, another Greek symbol, greater than zero, there exists some, and we need another big letter, so we, sh shall we use G. There exists some big G, which is an element of the natural numbers. Uh, just think of these as uh, substituting for the Ns, for the, the epsilon and the M, basically, because we've already used epsilon, we've already used delta, we've already used N and M, so now we're using G and eta. Okay, so... Um, for all eta greater than zero, there exists some big G, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little g and little h are greater than or equal to big G, it implies that the absolute value of x little g minus x little h is less than eta. So basically, whatever eta you give me, I can find you an x big G, such that if you take any term beyond, uh, equal to that or beyond that in this sequence x, uh, and ask what is the absolute value of the difference between those two terms, uh, sorry, any two terms you have to pick, uh, then it's going to be less than eta, basically. Uh, that's just the definition of this being a Cauchy sequence. Right, so let eta, again, be equal to delta over 2. Okay, so you'll, you'll, you will go along uh, in this... Um, you'll go along in this uh, sequence and you'll find uh, some uh, big G, let's say, which is um, an element of the natural numbers such that if you pick any two uh, terms, x little g and x little h, beyond that big G, the distance between them is less than delta over 2. And we'll cut that video here and continue this in the next video.